Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 83 of Direwolf20's Age of Engineering series. I've got an apocalyptic queen, which is cool, uh, and she is exploding things. Ow. That explosion's actually really painful. I want you to know that without Draconic Armor, it's a one-shot kill. Uh, it hurts quite a bit, actually. Um, but she's making gas tears, so she's doing a good job. Hey, I'm also getting royal jelly. Uh, ow, ow. Uh, so between episodes, got the production upgrades installed. Um, for the apocalyptic, we've got eight, which is the max it can do. Um, so this B, uh, by the way, um, uh, portable analyzer, is not the greatest in terms of production. She's got slow production going on. So what I think I want to do is take out this automation upgrade for a sec, because I want to... Um, essentially let her die here and make her better, make her way better. So what I'm going to need is some machines from Gendistry to help me out. Uh, so Gendistry machines, what are we going to want here? Uh, mutagen and mutatron we've got, apiaries we've got, genetic imprinter sounds pretty cool, genetic sampler, advanced mutatron, protein liquefier, DNA extractor, genetic transposer, and genetic replicator. So I gotta like Google these machines here real quick, but I'm pretty sure one of these uh, is the machine that I'm gonna need. And hey, you're out of stuff, cool. At some point I should like not make this this way. Hey, wow, that was quick. All right, because you auto uh, transfer. Um, one of these machines will allow me to take these traits that we've got, right? So we've got like lifespan shortest, speed fast. Totally want that trait. Uh, sample effect none. Totally want that trait. That will remove the explodingness of things. Um, and what type of flower it needs. Also, hey, pro tip real quick about these bees. Um, not listed anywhere about in-game documentation, had to find this on Google. They will not produce um, their secondary effects, which are blaze powder and gas tears, or, and gunpowder, unless there's a TNT block underneath them. Uh, and that TNT block is not airproof, as I detected. So um, yeah, we had to do some stuff about that. But long story short, there needs to be a TNT block <clears throat> directly underneath the industrial apiary. Um, in order for uh, this bee to do her things. So let me uh, figure out which of these machines we need. We'll be right back. All right, I'm pretty sure I know how this works now after a little bit of looking real quick. Uh, so we're gonna want an imprinter. Uh, that was, uh, I was correct at the guess at that. The other three machines are related to creating brand new bees. So you can create bees out of basically nothing, um, but the imprinter is what we're gonna need here. So we need two bee receptacles, the green processor, and uh, the power module. So an imprinter is what we're going to need to genetically imprint our bees. Um, what I'm probably going to do is, so in the past, I remember that it worked that basically you needed to, you, you could either, I'm not sure if you can do the queen with the imprinter, but we can totally do the princess and the drone, and then their offspring will always have the same attributes, right? So basically what I want to do is change production to fast, uh, and I want to change um, effect to none, right? So that's what we're going to do with this machine. Um, so let's figure out where you're going to live. Probably just right here. And for you, we're going to have you there. Cool. Power. Um, and then we need a template. So the way this works is the template... Uh, genetic template, which is made like so. We basically add our samples to it. So I want to get the speed fast and the effect none sample. And we can put them in there. We can put them one at a time or we can put them together, but you can see two out of 13 chromosomes used if I remove one, it's one out of 13, right? And you can see it's speed fast and effect none. Um, and we can put whatever other attributes we wanted on here. So we could do like the cave dwelling thing, we could put the species thing, we could put the fertility thing, none of that stuff. Have I been getting apocalyptic so his fertility is probably at one, right? Yes, fertility is one. Let's make him fertility two so we get some apocalyptic drones. Not that we need them, but it probably doesn't hurt to have a couple drones. Uh, so if we do that, now we've got three out of 13 chromosomes. Now, if you applied all 13 chromosomes, you could use this template in the machine called genetic replicator to create a bee. Basically, um, 
DNA extractor gets DNA out of bees. Genetic transposer or uh, protein liquefier gets protein out of like meat products like beef and stuff. And then you combine the two liquids you get from these machines in the genetic replicator with power and a full genetic template with all 13 chromosomes applied. And it will create a bee for you out of like nothing except all those resources that we just talked about. Um, but that's not what we want to do here. We want to take our existing bee, uh, which is apocalyptic and... Uh, bump her up. Uh, so what we're going to want is some labware, which is cheap and awesome stuff. Let's just get like a little, well, I guess, I think the five that we have will be enough for now. Um, and then we put our genetic template in there. So see when you hold shift there, it tells you what's missing. So those are all the other attributes that we could um, apply to this thing. And it shouldn't use this up. Um, the template will not be consumed. Uh, so we put our apocalyptic in there. And in theory, this should give us an apocalyptic princess with those good traits, uh, including the fast production, which is the main one that I care about, uh, and the removal of the whole, like, you're going to explode all the time and hurt me thing, because that's annoying. Sweet. So this should increase the rate at which we're getting gassed tears, among other things. So if we check the traits of this bee now, we'll see that production is fast, uh, fertility is two by two, so we'll get two... Um, drones instead of one uh, every time the bee, the princess dies or the queen dies, and then the effect is none. And then we're going to get the same thing out of this apocalyptic bee right to here. Do, 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 do. Yay! Um, so if we, uh, and this is still pristine stock, which is good, and you're the same, right? So two by two, fast production, no effect. So now I'm going to go back over here, pop the automation upgrade back in. You guys are good, and you're making a queen. That's going to be super cool. And if we check the queen's stats, it should match those of the princess and drone. So fast, fast, no effect too. Nice. So get that B out of there and go. So that should increase the rate at which we are getting gassed tiers. Uh, so we've pretty much now automated gas tiers, which is neat. Uh, the other bees I want to do this to um, are the ender queen. So let's... Um, Let's take automation out of you, and let's take automation out of you. So these bees are annoying. Lifespan and lifespan. I want them to die really fast. Because mostly I want the effect thing removed, because the effect thing is super annoying. Um, and what I'm going to do also is get an ender chest. Please process one of those for me real quick. Sweet. All kinds of good stuff happening there. Uh, so this one, uh, the reason I want to do this is right now I have these just piping into a barrel up here. Ow. See, that's why I want the effect thing removed. It's not even that I get hurt. It's just that it's an annoying noise. And actually, if you do stand there long enough, your entropy drops to like such a low level that your uh, or rises, I guess, to such a high level that you're going to hurt quite a bit. So basically, I'm going to replace this with an ender chest. Cool. Crafting is complete. Chest, item conduits, and good to go. So in theory, this way I just don't have to run. So you should be import busing. Nice. And gas tiers. We should be seeing a bunch of these. So we're at 547. Nice. Loving it. So yeah, once uh, these bees are done, ouch. I'm going to need more labware, by the way, now. Labware, glass panes. I never did set up a cobble works, and I probably should. All right, glass panes, let's go. Making the glass first. There we go. Ow. You guys are almost done. 97%. Sweet. So in a minute here, that will be done. Backing up for damage reasons. Boy, those bees hurt. <laughs> Not even kidding. They are painful. Done yet? Come on. Back in a sec when they're done. And they're done. Nice. So all of you um, basically need to get this attribution, right? So what I'm going to do, actually, is get this chest. I'm going to real quick set up a up 
extract on green, insert on brown, always active, down, extract on brown, always active. So if I throw, oh, you want to swap out those genetic templates, huh? I will blacklist you on the down, on the extract. The This dude, blacklist, genetic template, ignore metadata. Is that cool? So now you're going to behave. So let's see what happens if I throw the ender drone in there. He should go in. He should get the applicable stats. And he should bop back up into the top. Um, I guess the problem therein will be that he will match. And he will get pulled back in again, won't he? <laughs> yes. That, I guess, is a problem. This doesn't work as well as I would have hoped. Uh, we don't want to import and output to the same. Because, yeah, see, he got right back in there. So what we'll probably want to do... Um, is not extract. So let's just do insert and on the up will be extract only. And for now, I guess a separate chest. East extract, north insert, and that should be cool. So basically, so you were the one that got the better stats, right? Effect none you have effect ends, right? So if I put you guys in there, you should all be cool. So one got pulled out, goes into the genetic imprinter. Right, this is where I want my blacklist to be. So downs, insert, you will be east, blacklist that. This goes back in here, and Bob's your uncle. Nice, so that should work pretty smoothly. So I'll be back in a sec when that's done. So there we go. Uh, no more effects and fast production. Nice. So you don't need you anymore. And you and you can go together. And you can come out, you can go in, and you and you can go together. Perfect. So we now have some pretty awesome beads. No complaints. Uh, let's get this all set up. How are we doing, by the way? You are producing gas tiers like a boss. We've gotten four gas tiers uh, in the time that this ran, so that's pretty neat. Uh, and a fifth one, actually, here. So basically this is easy, right? We're just gonna set extract always active uh, on all these dudes. And you on the up will be disabled, right? So extract always active, extract always active, real simple. Down actually, cool. And then on this guy will be insert, and then you just start getting all the stuffs. Cool. So that'll clear those guys out. That just saves me running cabling all the way across, because I don't think we actually have uh, a basement to this room even. Nope, no basement. Uh, and we also don't have uh, cabling running over this direction. So that'll just save us that trouble. If all we needed to do was just have one import bus or a couple import buses over here, we might as well do it with an under chest. Sweet. So gas tiers are automated. That's awesome. Uh, and they're automated in quite a good way. I really need like faster flight. I'm used to that dark solarium plate and like, hey, angel ring is nice, but it's not dark solarium plate nights. Uh, but once we get awakened, um, the, the, the upgraded gear, which speaking of, don't look too bad. Maybe we should look into awakened cores and draconic energy cores today. Um, so we've got some awakened stuff, right? Nice. And if we requested another one, we could totally pull that off. Right? Uh, so let's do that. But then I also want to take you guys and start teaching things, right? So you're going to learn how to do that, which is cool. And I'm going to snag some because I'm sure I'm going to need some. And you can go into the molecular assembler, dude. And then... We want to learn how to make awakened cores and draconic energy core. So the awakened core is infusing a nether star with four wyverns and four awakened draconium. Okay. So star, four awakened, right? Um, five awakened and four wyverns. So 
that has a lot of processing to do. We'll come back when that's done. All set. So let's teach this thing how this works, right? So basically your pattern is gonna be one, two, three. And here's the question, is another star is already in this list somewhere? It is, of course. Uh, it's gonna be a hassle. So what I'm gonna do is probably, let's put the awakened draconium, right? in the ones that accept nether stars, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and uh, oh, you know, it's time for a new filter. I don't know what this was, but it's reset now. And then you can be on insert, filter, whitelist, and you're going to get one, two, three, four. Sweet, you already have that on the whitelist. Cool. Uh, so that, in theory, should be good. Um, I guess what we're going to want to do, I want to kind of make sure that the Awakened Draconium gets there before the Nether Star. I don't know if there's a good way to do that. Short of maybe having another insert or whitelisted. Yeah, that, that would probably work. So if we got another advanced filter. Oh, that's right. That's supposed to be a counting filter, isn't it? So let's get like two more of those. Cool. Um, you are the one that I added, so not you. What was this? A wyvern core? Okay. Here, wyvern core one, cool. But if we did this, right? Um, ow, no oxygen. So it's this one and this one? Yes. So what if we did this, put this guy to insert uh, with a counting filter, and instead of the awakened draconium being here, we'll put it here, and we'll make this a higher priority than the one on the back, and only one awakened draconium. And we'll do the same here. This one will be a counting filter on the insert with awakened draconium higher priority. That technically should work. Um, and do we have some facades that I can borrow? Do I have no facades? I want a painting machine these things so that they look halfway decent. Because remember, a big part of the space is having it look halfway decent. Uh, so one facade for you, and one facade for you, and the rest can go away. Cool, and cool. All right, let's give this a try. Uh, so in theory, this these guys should distribute properly. And it looks like they did. Nice. Um, Cause it should dump everything all in one go. And hopefully the nether star thing will behave. And if it doesn't, we'll figure it out. Kind of wouldn't mind testing this, but. All oh, right, you don't have a, okay. So let's do, you can whitelist on there. Sweet. How much energy does this cost, by the way? Nine million RF. That's not bad. Look, it's already almost done. That's quick and easy. 
So that'll get us an awakened. And that's not bad. So let's go test it uh, a time or two. Really should think about how I can automate the dragon. I did not spend time between episodes figuring out how to automate the dragon. I said I was going to, and I didn't, because I'm a terrible person. I assumed if I was honest with you guys, you'd cut me a break. Uh, cool. Nice. So now, if we want to learn how to make Draconic Energy Core, that's this. So let's get one of these, just so that you have the pattern thing, right? And that just requires a few Draconic Cores. What's the slowest part of this? Is the end diamond bit? I don't think there's any way to really speed that up in any meaningful way, but that's okay. You can do it, buddy. Come on, Wyvern Energy Core. There you go. And you can go into the assembler. And in fact, this doesn't go into the assembler. This goes over here. Sweet. So let's think about upgrading our wyvern chest plate. That's not like a plan. Uh, so that's two awakens and awakened and awakened. Cool. And this I'm not going to teach the whole pattern thing. So you have a few things to make. What don't you have? Uh, missing cadmium ingots. Really? Re he he healy. Cadmium. We are low on cadmium. What planet is cadmium on? Neptune. Guess where we're visiting today, guys. <laughs> so let's do this. Uh, let's get our spacesuit. Let's take this off. Let's visit Eris. And let's collect our miner, because um, this thing was mining what? What type of ores and whatnot was he getting? Uh, it's from Modern Metals. Cadmium's on Neptune, Tantalum's on Eris. So how are we for Tantalum at the moment? We have 2,378 Tantalum, probably enough to last us for a bit. So what I'm going to do is just pick this whole thing up. Uh, what I'm going to do also is just mark where he was. And I should be able to use the same shape card clearing quarry thing um, just on Neptune. So if we take all this, teleport to our old base, dial up Neptune. <laughs> And hello, Neptune. Sweet. Neptune does not... Wow, Neptune feels like it has more gravity than Earth. Don't I feel like I'm falling faster? It's kind of cool. So let's... Um, what I'll do is I'll just set up a new right-click destination here. Add new as Neptune. Lock it. Easy peasy. And then we'll uh, do this. So you, you, and you. And the lever. Cool. And the card goes in. Ah. Oh, hello. You're in that direction for some reason. Does that matter? Uh, a little bit, maybe. Turn you off. Yeah. Why are you facing that direction? That's interesting. Okie dokie then. I guess that'll work. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Let's let, let's let it do that direction. I think that'll be fine. If I take you out and back in, just want to test this a little bit. I'd kind of like it to be centered, but if it can't be, it can't be. Okay, weird. It's being a little bit funny, but I'm not going to worry about it. So that, in theory, 10, cool. Chunk zero of 220. 
currently clearing. Let's see if we can go find out where it's clearing at. Anybody see a giant hole anywhere? And to be fair, um, it might be mining underneath in one of these areas and it might not be clearing out the top level, but that's okay. We'll just let it run. I don't like how you're all blue, but whatever. All right, um, so you're running and cadmium is what we needed, right? on Neptune. Let's see if we've gotten any. We have. Nice. So let's go home and set up processing for it. Right. Uh, how did I do this? All oh, right. I forgot to chunk load that. Which a couple people noticed that my chunk loading, by the way, did I, was I dumb about this? No, for once. Cool. It's on a chunk border again, but I'm okay. <laughs> um, so let's check out our claimed chunks. Loaded chunks is 52 out of 64. All right, so yeah, I'm not I'm not overdoing my loaded chunks. People were saying I was at like 59 out of 50 or something uh, in some of the comments, and that might be why some things aren't working. But my loaded chunks are 53 out of 64, so I should be allowed and just fine, right? Unless there's some kind of server setting about the limit of chunk loading, but um, yeah, that's what you're cruising. So I should no longer need my spacesuit at this point. And how did I do this again? Where did I set this up? Was it in here somewhere? These guys. That's it. That's how I did it. I remember now. Uh, so I want a card of some kind. A uh, capacity card. Good, I have a couple of those. So I'm going to put one in there and we will say cadmium. One in there. Let's say cadmium. Nice. So now we have cadmium processing going. Now what are you doing cadmium wise? Are you automatically doing the powdered? What did I, I think I did that in, where's my mechanism room? I have a big to-do list for this base for quality of life stuff. Uh, so one of these is set to export bus something somewhere. How did I do this again? You're an import bus. Is it on the back? Is that how I did it? Yeah, there's your powdered tantalum. So let's get our powdered cadmium. And now you should be auto smelting cadmium. Cool. Nice. Look at that awesomeness. It's like, hey, I just got a bunch of copper. We're going to process it all. Boom. We're cooking up a whole bunch of copper. And now we've got cadmium for days. So I'll let that run for a little bit. Um, but that's lots of cadmium ingots, which is nice. Um, that is so, so, so cool. Um, and then let's do... Now I should be able to do our Draconic Energy Core. Nice. And we are going to want one of those. Beautiful. Hey, you're making up more fuel rods for me. That's cool. Look at all the things that Autocrass to get that. It is so awesome. Like, just the amount of steps involved in making that is insane. Like, let's review, right? Uh, we need to awaken draconium cores, which we have automated. We need wyvern energy cores, which we need automated. We need all these things, right? <laughs> just like the silly amount of large things that we need is insane to me. Um, so yeah, that's that's fun times and diamonds and the atomic like remember all this automation that we did to get all this going and now it's just like click and you've got a bunch nice uh so you should be done sir nice so i'm not gonna like put this in the thing i'm just gonna manually craft these i know the word manual it's like almost like a dirty word but it's a thing we're gonna do so this should allow me to upgrade this dude pedestal tier too low oh right we need to upgrade our pedestals don't we my goodness, how did I forget about that? Dyer is a derp. Uh, so yeah, let's get our um, things here and figure out how to upgrade our pedestals to draconic fusions. Uh, wow, we need an entire awakened draconium block per pedestal. So luckily we get four of these, so it's not too bad. 
but that is a thing. Luckily, it only needs seven as well to go. So we just need diamonds and some wyvern cores. So in total, we're going to need 20 wyvern cores and 10 awakened draconian blocks. So let's get those 20 wyvern cores crafting, if I may. Missing, ooh, 62 quantum singularities. We have a bunch, right? Singularities. Why do you feel like you might be stuck? What is up? Did I make you uh, active with redstone? Yes, so that's cool. So that's cool. Errors, out of energy? Did that not give you energy? Now you've got energy, buster. I think your tooltip's lying about being out of energy. Unless the delayer won't feed energy. That could be it. Materializer? I don't really need this materializer. Hello. Put away magnet, please. Gotta fix. Be right back, off camera. Fixing. Alright, think I fixed it. We'll see. It seems like every now and then it gets into a situation where, like, the items are transferring faster than it can handle. But we'll keep an eye on that. Oh, hey you. What's up? There's a problem. This... Should be doing that. Better. Okay, cool. Now are we behaving again? Yeah. So can I get 10 to start off with? That should be fine. And then that should spark this thing running again. Nice. Okay. Back in a minute when this is all done. So this is definitely putting my automation through its paces. This is like the biggest ask I've ever had. Uh, and it looks like it totally broke, so that's cool. Uh, you are stuck, sir. That is not cool. Definitely one of the biggest asks I've ever had of this system, and testing it, it does not seem to be behaving a little bit too well. Uh, so let me see if I can troubleshoot this a little bit and come up with a better way, because basically it's, um, it's getting that first. Does it matter what order these guys are in? East, west. No, so this actually should kind of sort of be working better. Um, you know what it is? It's this order. So realistically, we should put you guys first. It pulls out from left to right, I think, inside this inventory, right? So that works pretty well. Alright, we'll let that cook, and then I'll keep an eye on it for a little bit. I'll babysit it. Just a bit. So you know what, guys? We have hit the wrapping up point for the episode, so what I'm going to do is let all this run. It's just going to take a few minutes. Um, not a terribly large amount of time, but... So I requested 10 wiring cores here, and 10 wiring cores here. Um, and each of them are pretty much set. We're just waiting on the end diamonds at this point, uh, and the fire and electric diamonds as well. So not terrible. So you got stuck again, you stinker. Why are you doing that? Okay, cool. So you got put in there. So that might, yeah, that helps. So it's all about the ordering. I'll have to see what I can do. You know, I could put this in blocking mode and that would probably help. Probably. That would theoretically help. And prevent that from happening. So we'll try that next time we have to request 20 wyvern cores. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do between episodes now is go kill the end dragon a few times and maybe actually look into the possibility of automating the hearts. Um, anytime I've tried to do that in the past, it has not really been possible. 
but we'll see. Maybe there's a mod in this pack that I'm not familiar with the capabilities of, and it might be within the realm of possibility. For now, Dowell20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time uh, and have more fun with stuff and things. All right, guys. Take it easy.